Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast, a podcast for English teachers in search of creative teaching strategies. Whether you're new around here or you've been listening since the beginning, I'm so glad you're joining me for today's edition of Highly Recommended. This week, let's talk about some great summer PD options out there. First things first, I've got to tell you about my personal favorite summer PD experience of all time, because maybe you can use it as inspiration for crafting a similar project. My husband still jokingly refers to this experience as my smoothie grant. One summer, my school had money left from its PD budget, and teachers were invited to apply for small, simple bits of funding that they could use to produce something helpful to their work over the summer. I applied for a budget to go get a smoothie every morning in June and sit in my favorite beachside coffee shop to read the Odyssey and design curriculum for the ninth grade. It was the best. (laughs) Every morning I went rollerblading. Every morning I ended at this little cafe with the Odyssey in my computer. I sat there with my apple pie smoothie. I ate my little breakfast and I read and wrote for two hours. It was relaxing. It was productive. It was wonderful. I felt happy to be doing it. And so if your school has budget for summer PD and it's just inviting you to apply for whatever kind of development you want, consider getting creative with a grant that will really help you do the task that you need to do in a way that you can enjoy. Okay, next on my list, I want to mention the National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Institute series. These cool programs take place all over the United States, giving you a chance to travel to interesting places, dig deep into their culture and history, and collaborate with colleagues that come in from all over the country. There are so many of these summer institutes that I can't really go into them all here, but let me just give you a few examples. This summer, they'll have one called Grand Coulee Dam, the Intersection of Modernity and Indigenous Cultures. That one's in Spokane, Washington. They'll have one called Freedom Summer, 60 Years Later, in Jackson. And they'll have one called Shakespeare and Digital Storytelling in Decatur, Georgia. And really, that's just the tip of the iceberg. My husband went to one of these institutes once, the one of the ones on civil rights, and he remembers it being absolutely outstanding. He always speaks so highly of it. Okay, I consistently hear from people who have found the National Writers Project Summer Workshops extremely impactful. So that's next. If you're really wishing that you could dive deeper into the teaching of writing, I would look up your closest National Writing Project site and see if they have either an in-person or an online option for you this summer. Speaking of online options, there are some wonderful ones online. Let me give you a couple of examples. There are a number of on-demand workshops from the innovative site Facing History and Ourselves. These would be great ones to explore. There's also a free online course available from the National Museum of the American Indian. This one is called the edX course, Foundations for Transforming Teaching and Learning About Native Americans. And I think this would be a wonderful course to take over the summer. It's based on a series of three webinars. I don't think it's going to be super duper long, um, but I think it's going to be really interesting, really helpful. It explores the this huge online collection that the museum has and how you can use it um, within your teaching. And of course, if you're interested in an online option, I'll be teaching Camp Creative over the summer in June. Pretty soon I'll be revealing the topic. I haven't quite decided for sure yet, but that is something that I always do over the summer, so I hope you'll join me there too. Finally, I want to give a quick nod to the Exeter Humanities Institute, which is a week-long workshop all about the discussion method Harkness. I attended this institute when I was 23 after my first year of teaching, following a month-long experiment in all four of my English classes that year to use only Harkness. So I was coming into it knowing that I was really interested in Harkness, knowing that it had been like a productive, helpful method for my class. And I learned 
so much that week. It really influenced me as a teacher on a fundamental level. Coming out of that workshop, I never used any other discussion method again um, in my continuing years of teaching because I just couldn't imagine not using Harkness. It felt like such a rich format to me. It became so important to me. So if Harkness is something that you've used, but you'd like to take it up a level, I would really recommend the Exeter Humanities Institute. If you haven't used it before, this is, this is like a really deep dive. (laughs) It's not just an introduction. So I would want to have some like prior experience and interest in the method before committing a whole week. But if you have that experience and interest, wow, it's amazing. I would really recommend it. Of course, self-care, family time, and travel are all also great ways to renew your strength and creativity this summer. But if you're looking for a quality PD experience, these are some of my very favorite options. So I highly recommend you follow the links in the show notes today and check them out. (music) 